I went into the capital city of Namibia and I, I wanted to get away from work and and uh, I didn't know the town and I roamed the streets and I heard some fucking awesome music. Like nobody sings like Africa. And I went into this bar and um, and I realized uh, I was the only white guy in there. And nobody gave a f two hoots about it. So I went to the bar and got a beer and listened to the music. And, you know, of course, you know, I'm white. I'm associated with coins. So some girls came and said, oh, can you buy me a beer? And it was easy. But in general, I had to absolutely, you know, like whites, white South African warned me, you know, watch out that you don't get stabbed or, or robbed or whatever. And I got robbed, like pinch pocketed or whatever you call it, you know. But I just put it down to like, look, if you don't have anything, uh, the idea of value is, um, has almost no value. So if you can steal 50 bucks of somebody to buy yourself a sandwich, mm -hmm. it's no sin, you know, especially from somebody who's got plenty of 50 bucks, you know. But I find like the, the hysteria that's, that's, and that's why I said earlier, like uh, maybe you should take like the guess off a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. Because I find the over information of things, it's 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 almost social media is is it's almost stressing me it's, out. <laughs> it's very, I don't know. It's it's so good at putting the stuff that you're interested in in front of you. Does that make sense? Like if you're not a believer of some sort of movement or anything, you'll get educated by social media on that. Uh, yeah, that, that, that would be a tragedy. Like the uh, algorithm. I've noticed too, like when I was, sorry to interrupt, when I was, you know, when I was growing up, um, my classmates were um, interracial, like they were, it was just, it's interracial, it's quite multicultural. And it's funny, like in my family, watching my, my family find partners, my bro brother's partner at the moment, and they're in a great relationship, she's Filipino, and um, my cousin's also marrying a a Filipino and they've had two kids together and then my other cousins has a French African um, and so I've just and so a lot of my family is um, now becoming is multicultural. very multicultural and mixed and as we talk about is it an issue no what I'm saying is the observation of um, how society's melting pots and how we are in transition you know we do like you were saying before how we have um, racial tensions and we had racial tensions when the Italians and the Greeks came and uh, the exactly. immigrants come and then they settle in and we start learning the kids start learning the language they start hanging out with people at school and they grow up together and they fight each other and they have kids and all of a sudden their kids hanging out and and this process that actually does take a time um, where it has all of its inner conflicts at the time all of a sudden them, the melting pot, the cultures begin to mix and make a new culture, a mix of all cultures mixing in, where you find that Australia is becoming a very, very different place than it was 50 to 100 years ago. And it is the family environment. So does the whole world, though, you know. So does the whole world. You know, like so, I'm thinking, like, if we wait a few generations, we'll all be mochaccino. Yeah. The, whole, so, the, the, whole, <laughs> the whole racist... <laughs> The whole racial thing would be totally out of the window. Uh, <laughs> I'm you know? the most multicultural thing there is. So I'm Austrian, Indonesian, born in Mexico, and I grew up in Nigeria. Exactly. And you have six toes. <laughs> 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 Mochaccino toes. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting what you're saying. I think social media can be very beneficial, and it can teach us really great things and it can be a platform to sh share different experiences like in the same way you had that experience where you kind of almost felt like you just blended in and um and you looked at it kind of from a human perspective and thought well you know I wasn't victimized based on my color it was just that I had more than someone else and yeah. you know in a, in a kind of wanting to survive perspective they took it from me someone might have like a completely different experience like for me growing up in Nigeria as a, a white kid um I was a novelty yeah of course. I was a highlight like yeah. you were touching my skin my hair you know it was uh, like so I had to, I had the same thing being with my firstborn baby in Indonesia 
Mm. They always wanted by, you know, she was blonde hair. Yeah. She wanted to touch her, you yeah. know, don't put it on the ground, you know, like <laughs> all that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, this is why I encourage you to travel with your young baby because you're not uh, lining up at airports. They always put you forward. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Business <a high> class. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm a highlight in Indonesia too. They, I'm, I'm white, literally, as a kid, would be approached every 10 minutes by modeling agencies there going, so white. Really? And they would look at my mom, who has like super dark skin, and they would assume that she's a nanny. Wow. Yes. Well, I, isn't I, it, isn't, I did you know, this girl in a China, and she, and she, she, like, the conversation come up, but she didn't want to be black. She didn't want, she didn't want to be dark, like tanned, because mm. tanned means farmer, means yeah. you work. Mm. And so fair means that your lifestyle is affluent, mm. and therefore affluence associated with. Well, status and status, yeah. Um, and but in Australia, it's funny because um, a luxury and wealth and status tan. is a tan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My Indonesian grandma came over to visit when I was a teenager, and um, I'll never forget. I'd been at, you know, Bondi all summer getting a sunburn because my dad's a redhead and has freckles, and I have, I had freckles too, had them removed. And, um, and I would just burn, like, instantly. And I'd been in Bondi all summer trying to get a tan. And my grandma arrives from Indonesia. And we're walking down the road. And she, she's she got an umbrella. And she goes, quick, get under the umbrella. You don't want to get dark. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. I, I find it, I was actually, <clears throat> I'm getting really, it, it stoops me. There's a... Uh, just burn. There's a... Uh, <laughs> get under the umbrella for you fucking burn. <laughs> There's a there's a uh, there's a um, there's a, um, a newsreader on Australian television that you know I can't name any channels know what right and she's she's black Australian and she's super pretty right I think she's super pretty right but every time I watch the news and she's on her makeup is really pale and you can you can actually see that because I'm I'm a very visual person because I always look at her hands. Because her hands are really black, but when you look at her face and her neck and whatever, like on what's showing on her chest, the the proportion of you know pale makeup that is caked on her, I almost want to ring her up and say like, why do you put up with this shit? You know, like to suit some sort of picture. You know, you know, it's, um, it is almost insulting me. Like I'm I'm a big fan of black people. Like you know. And I don't like maybe I'm black inside, and that's probably an insult. <laughs> you know, it's from the waist down. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's hey, you know. it's 2021. Everything's on the cards, my friend. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. And, and I'm really keen of how we're gonna. How do we do that? You know, how is this, this political? Oh, you can't say that. Can you? you could you also put out though? Because they say that the human race spawned from Africa, right? Exactly. And then when you listen to those tribal beats, right, and your body starts moving like you're like, oh, this is my jam, this is my jam. And then... <laughs> Love and your you jam. Could, and you, could say, you could say, look, on a really deep, deep, deep biological level, <laughs> I'm African. No, no. <laughs> and no one's going to fuck with that. No, no there's, one's going there's, to. There's actually, a f there's, there's actually a fable about it, man. Right? And uh, because when you see uh, the insides of African people, uh, it's actually white. They've got the same color than my. The, the, and, you know, apparently God put out a big dish, you know, with water for everybody to wash themselves, right? And by the time the Africans came to it, the water was run out so they could only smear their hands in it. <laughs> it's, 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 pretty, like it's, uh, it's probably like in an insulting story, but... But I, uh, no, it's, why is it so funny? I should, uh, like, like I'm probably out the door. Ali, <laughs> you're out. <laughs> you're out. You're out. Right? It so, is funny. It's a funny joke. You know, it's but it's, uh, it's like, I don't know where I got the story from, but it's been, <laughs> <laughs> it's been told. Deep, right? it's deep, been told. deep, deep in your... No, this, this thing your, that they're saying that, like, actually our race, our race, our skin color uh, emerged from the fact that we moved north into the northern hemisphere and there was less sunlight. 
So we uh, we we actually now our skin uh, absorbs more uh, vitamin D than black people also get sunburned. They actually get colder a lot quicker than we do. But I maybe we should sh sh you know change the subject. <laughs> and, <laughs> and <laughs> like like I've dug a hole and uh, <coughs> no, it's not about a <laughs> hole because <laughs> I. We're lingering. I, I'm I'm full stop. I'm I'm not really want to engage into this racial difference bullshit because no, it no, bores no, no. the shit out of me. Like it's it's really. I assume we're far too intelligent of like engaging into this thing. Why, why are we differentiating so much? You know, you know every individual is sort of almost struggling far too much within themselves. You know. Yeah. I just wondered I how. Think about the, I think that. I think we should just talk about that um, madness. How better the, the the year will be? I think. Oh, you want to go on a positive? A positive, yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, Tristan, well, I, 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 I wasn't negative. Tristan, hey, Tristan's I, doing a lot of positive stuff this year, and I think it's good mm. that uh, we go on a positive note. Yeah. I'm, well, yeah. I'm doing a lot of positive stuff at the yeah. moment. I'm trying to just shut my face. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I wanted to ask something. Uh, I wanted to. Um, um, uh, asked uh, Mariah something, and I, um, and I, I wonder if that is again sacrilege. I wonder how, even though you know you're multicultural, right? mm. how does uh, uh, I mean you're you're a young, attractive woman. Could you bring how, that a bit, Ali? Just <coughs> how does how does uh, your appearance and the way you run your life? How say, being a young, attractive woman? How does it? advantage your situation or disadvantage your situation, right? Because I'm thinking like, uh, and I don't know why I'm asking this, uh, maybe because I'm getting older, <laughs> but uh, because us, because I mean, talking about social media, it's uh, to me, I mean, it's a great way to be seen, you know, like, uh, like the stuff that I'm working on personally at the moment, my my um, creative um, exercise is a very um, insular thing, and and social media is like you know I can post my work right, mm. <coughs> but of late I'm thinking why? Because I want applause, I want acknowledgement, you know, I want to be seen, I want to be heard, you know. But what I'm coming more and more to the point that. Um, it, it's the outcome of my work is actually secondary. The practice is where it's at, you know. I don't know what I'm trying to get here at the moment. But I think uh, you're asking what benefits is the social media <coughs> to you. I think for the younger generation, it gives them platform to be discovered and it gives them a platform to sell their shit. It's okay. Uh, so for me personally... I joined social media because my favorite brand had a competition where you could post a selfie with a cardigan and you could win another cardigan. How awesome is that? <laughs> right. So, <laughs> so I, I made an Instagram account and I, you know, I never had a MySpace. I had Facebook to connect with a few people in school. I made an Instagram account and I thought I'm going to snap this selfie and if I don't win the cardigan, I'll just delete it. So I did that. And I, th I don't think I deleted it. I just never used it again for like three years. So. Did, did you win the cardigan? No. No. <laughs> Can you believe that? I made an Instagram account. I didn't win the cardigan. Um, so then, you know, a few years later, I was the person at university that still had a Nokia. Like, I refused to get the smartphone. I was like, I don't want to waste time on this. Um, I just, I just want to live in the present, be real. And I don't care about all of that. And... A few years later, I, I made an account and I had started to get into fitness and I thought, I'm going to start documenting my stuff. And I just thought, I'm just, it's, it's almost like a, a diary for me, an accountability thing. So I'm just going to post my progress. I'm going to post things regularly. And I didn't add anybody that I knew. So this was like a secret account. So I just thought it's, it's almost just a personal collection of images, but it's out there and it's, it's um, just my progress. And eventually it's, it's snowballed. I literally had a different name that people wouldn't find me under. So it wasn't, I wasn't hoping to, to kind of get any recognition from it. 
Um, and I did, you know, bodybuilding competitions and I documented the whole process from, you know, when I looked like a normal person, became shredded, everything. And eventually, yeah, it, it snowballed and it got to a point where one day, you know, a few million people had seen my stuff and um, it didn't matter that it wasn't my name anymore because people I knew were actually finding me. And I look at the whole thing and I feel like for me, social media has been a platform to connect with so many people that I would have otherwise never connected with. Right. Um, it has been... You've got a bit of a crew there going now. I've seen some of your videos and you have a team. I've seen some of the videos <coughs> you make and you've choreographed um, <laughs> like these wonderful exercise backflipping things where you do oh. this like thing. <laughs> but it looked like that you see these guys that whatever because you must work out there at bondi Mm. often and you have a crew there and what's that like so i literally just met them and i can say for example two years ago i went to the states and um and i got there and just in a quick big summary I was seeing someone, we broke up, and I found myself on the other side of the world in the States. Yeah, oh, I've heard that alone. someone say that. <laughs> if I got a dollar every time I heard someone do that, anyway, I was, <laughs> I was over the other side with my really? boyfriend, and he dumped me, oh, and then I was alone <laughs> by myself, well, and my life changed. And I literally, you know, <laughs> knew dreams. people from social media that I met up with and I had an instant network of friends. I had someone that allowed me to stay with her and we we had already bonded previously on social media. She introduced me to like all these other people that I'd spoken to on social media before. I literally had pretty much like my equivalent of friend group there and did all the things that I usually do over there with all these people that I kind of already had connected with that would never otherwise have been possible. I think with everything, it's how you take it and how you use it. If you're sitting there... No, it's, I, I totally hear you. I think like when you, you just said earlier that you actually started it for your own personal diary. And I think something that would kind of keep you pretty grounded. And then maybe later on it is morphed out and you find yourself at the end of the world and you run into people that you actually had previous contact with, even though it was via the tel- the telephone. Uh, There's a saying that I that I really like and I use for um, I mean it's helped me a lot. Um, I remember a preacher said it once and I overheard it, <laughs> but it was um, he said something like this. He said anything that is um, gained by self promotion is maintained by self promotion. And I really like that in regards to how I heard that or how I've implemented that into my life is that you know. If you are uh, drawing attention, let's say you're wanting to build a career for yourself and what you do to build that momentum and attraction and attention to it is what you have to continue to do to keep the, to maintain the attention. And so, uh, well, to finish it off, that really made me question myself is what am I actually willing or wanting to spend time doing? Like what is, can I maintain if it is this some people are so passionate about being socially media active and they actually get jobs on it and they become people's PAs to do that for them and that's great but I knew for me I was like I can't I don't want to spend my days becoming an influencer of sort and to, to that brand because I, I can't maintain that because it's inauthentic to me. Yeah, this is this is sort of like the uh, this is uh, somebody int- actually introduced me into the social media influencer, and I think that you are not it, right? Mm. I mean, this is a b- more about your pursuit, about the interest that you have, and sharing it with others, right? Yeah. Uh, being a young woman, being a very good athlete being photographic that all helps because it's it feeds like to me as an outsider it feeds into and that was my original question it feeds into the imagery that is floating out there right Mm. Uh, because um, uh, i'm just looking at the mirror and i'm thinking yeah i'm getting older right i just look at a passport picture of myself 40 years ago when i came to the country and i think like Oh, what a pretty green old little <laughs> arrogant bastard you are, right? And but things change, right? Mm. And and uh, values change, you know. I've I've just looked at um, 
where my daughter works, it's, it's a shared studio space in Alexandria, there's a painter there. She's probably your age. She's very pretty, but her craft is sensational. Like like me as a painter, like I mean she's I don't know who trained her, but she's a she's a classical painter mm. with modern thematics, right? Mm. And I look at her work and I'm thinking I'm gonna give up painting. You know? <laughs> I thought you had her already had. <coughs> <coughs> I'm I'm close. I'm I'm close. I'm, 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 I'm close. I'm close. But anyway, I when I talk to her, like I've only met her twice, she she's just consistent. Like mm. with her work, right, and the output was amazing. And I wondered if she actually uses social media, or if her work attracts so much customers, you know, because she just sits there painting commissions, you know. Mm. I've been doing something. Um, I mean, with the, there was your question, I suppose, but anyway, that's something I'd be really interested at the moment is intention and how intention creates. Um, a gravitate gravitar or a gravitational pull towards towards movement you, a movement towards you i was um it's the law of attraction hmm. yeah, and, uh, yeah manifestation oh but the, fuck the, i hate this language but what? <laughs> it is the but, secret but like in, in, secret. and i think they have already have told about it but i suppose if i want to talk from experience about what's been happening for me during yeah, tell covid us, Justin. um when here you know when when COVID hit, you know, um, all of the sort of uh, superfluous objectives that I wanted to have, you know, that I wasn't, that I, like, as an actor, you think I have to achieve certain goals and I should, you know, I've got to have a better relation with my agent. I should be on a TV show by now, or et cetera, et cetera. Your career should it's be in full flow. conversation every fucking morning and, we have. And that was, that was quite, that I was should, a, I should, that was I should. beginning, that was beginning to depress me because the one question I did ask myself, which was, you go, what do you want, Tristan? Do you want, you know, they say you should have your goals be specific, you know, do you want to get Why? thing on Game of Thrones or, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, um, that would be great, but it didn't have a fire in me. It didn't have a... Um, Live in the hills. It wasn't a good enough, good enough for me, that the goal that, that you should have as an actor. Or well, what is the what what is success to you as an actor? Money. This is a really good question. What is, what is success? And I'll, I'll because I'll, success is valued, and for me at the moment, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. I was telling my wonderful story. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. There you go. It's in that. It's all in that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so when that all went away, you know, um, I was then free from the obligation to pursue the same patterns that I, I had been doing because I thought this is the patterns that because of COVID. Doing. Because of COVID. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then I was able to, once I was gone, I was able to go, um, well, there's the play reading group that I wanted to do. I want to be reading plays. And I read a good book called The Gift by Lewis Hyde, which was about, oh, read that. Um, it's about gift exchange versus market economy and gift exchange, the artist's pr product. And that was very influential to me as well. That helped actually um, me to get an understanding of what was going on for me, um, which was... I. And so I, so I started the play reading group, which was creating a community, um, and it was about discussing the ideas of the play because I started to tap back into the tradition of what it was that I loved about it, and what I loved about it was how the work is transforming in itself. When you go and you explore um, a great work, or you're doing creative work, you are actually in a process of transformation and of individuation and and all of that stuff, and that teaches you about yourself, and there's no better success than to um, feel like you're renew in a constant state of renewal, mm. um, that you're not becoming stale as a person. Mm. Um, and that fills up that heart space. That See, I always felt success for me is when my heart <coughs> is, is giving me a big thumbs up. Yeah. That's when I feel like I'm mm. successful. I think yeah. this is where, where value lies. Like this mm. is a really like, you know, um, something echoes back onto you and your work is actually nourishing you. You might not get a paycheck. I mean, a good paycheck is a nice thing, but it might not actually nourish it nourishes you, you know. It might get you to like, go down to the bottle shop and buy fucking two bowls of vodka and have <laughs> <laughs> <That's laughs> yourself a paycheck on. can do. One yeah. of the God, people um, I admire the most is um, you know Marcel Duchamp, who did the bicycle wheel and all these artworks that made people question um, what is art. And he was a great painter, and he painted a whole lot of 
great paintings. And then one day he decided, okay, um, I'm moving on from the paintings now. So it's not it's not like he didn't have artistic craft. So he put, you know, a urinal on a thing and said, this is the fountain. He was a great painter and decided I'm, I'm moving on to another cause. And so he created all these artworks and made these statements. And generally in his life, he was saying that he worked in a library so that he could create the things that he actually wanted to create, not the things that would sell or things that, you know, would would um, provide him with financial security. This was this was a lot of what about I, the gift with Lewis Hyde was about. Exactly. It was, <coughs> it was very much about... He started with actually telling a lot of stories about Indigenous cultures that had gift gift exchange currency. Mm. So what they would do is they would pass valuable items to each other that would pass around the islands, per se, and would get wow. around. And that I, that process, what that process did was cultivate relationships and ties as if um, it's sort of a triangle like some other cultures like um, would, they would hunt, they would find the food, then they would eat, but they would give the food to the medicine man who would then sacrifice it back up to the um, the forest god. So there would be this cycle of yeah. like, thank you forest, giving, giving. giving. Yeah. But that created an understanding in a cyclical um, element that created a relationship to mm. them and their environment, but yeah. also create yet yeah, that feeling. And what ended up coming, what ends up coming, because we live in a capitalist society, a lot of us is market economy driven. Mm. You know what he was outlining. The challenge for the artist that lives in our time and place is that the pressure to economize your gift talents. So you say you've created a beautiful piece of poetry or whatever. Mm. All of a sudden, the first person someone says, you know, when you have a nice voice or you sing, and someone says, Tell Joe. They know they say, um, you should be a star. You should make an album. You should make some money off your gift. That's yeah. how culture uh, does that immediately. But how many artists As, died and broke when, when and you, their you, fucking you, stuff is worth millions now? How many artists died like, that's like Da Vinci? Dujamp literally said, he said, you know, I. I'm waiting for, I, I know that this isn't my audience, that people don't appreciate my work at the moment, but it's like, it's true to me. And he basically said, um, I accept that I will probably die without having any recognition or anything, but the right audience will come. And that's exactly what happens. Like after he died, everyone's like, oh, what a genius. I'm actually want to kind of like jump yeah, into this. Like up. when I first met you and uh, uh, at acting class and, and we, I don't know, we're walking down to the park rehearsing something and you show me some of your creative work. Mm. And and I looked at it and I still have this physical memory of this, not necessarily innocence, but the way you approach material and you take material A and you take material B and the cur- and I could see the, your own curiosity of putting the two together to see what comes out. And there was no contemplation about, oh, I'm going to be like a recognized artist. <laughs> because the process, because I could see, because, and I loved the freshness of what you were playing with. And I, because I could really feel like this, this almost innocent and the freshness of like my own curiosity and, the, and loving the process of what's happening here without anybody watching mm. and that's actually what it's about you know yeah. Listen, you know and 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 i mean I, i am actually working at the moment like now we were talking i'm thinking what am i doing and and, <coughs> and i'm thinking oh i'm actually looking for material that already has history and it's been discarded and i'm finding it again and i'm putting it back together and making a new history this is like because like like i'm i think that I was, and I have this feeling that there's a calling. It's calling on me, but it's the calling of a renaissance, which means that I do see the way forward for me creatively. And I think it might be a zeitgeist thing, is that I'm feeling drawn to going back to um, the writers of the early 19th century. I've just started reading Eugene O'Neill, and I'll be moving on to Clifford Odets. And there, and I before that I was just having a look at Ibsen and um, Chekhov, and for some reason, because I feel like the current climate right now is almost dry with inspiration, everything that's coming out it's right true, now. It's true. It's true because we are, we are almost muffled to say what we, we have want, to go back. and all the semantics that these these people addressed are actually not finished. 
Mm. And we yeah, are now please. so politically correct into a corner that we can't open ourselves up and say, look, I think things suck, you know. Because, for um, example, you saw uh, Portrait of Dorian Gray, right? Mm. And there's a classic example of, of a book that was written by Oscar Wilde uh, quite a while ago. Yet they, were, so they, they brought it back yeah. into... Um, reinterpreted adapted it same addressing the exact same issues but in the new light of today it 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 echoes the past in a new way but also brings light to the details of our um same traps because yeah. our own vanity of course is a universal problem that we've never we will never ever it's part of being human is to be a narcissist hmm. for a time possibly hopefully at least you get to experience. We all have traits that are, yeah. We and it's, yes, that's yeah. right. It's a severity, yeah. But it is another example of, well, that's what I'm leaning into as I'm yeah. going. It seems to me that, like you said, that this there is a calling at the moment to learn what we haven't finished c- finished learning. Mm. We've had a lot of information yeah. thrown at each other from eighteen <laughs> hundreds yeah. on. Yeah. The information we've had to the industrial revolution to the last hundred years. Oh my god. We have just fucking scarred. I reckon we have to go back. There are, someone said last week that we're heading for another ice, ice age. We have to prove free. <laughs> we have to what? We're heading for another ice age. Uh look, what you mean do, do you, like um in nature? Yeah, the world. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, the, it's it's been on the cards for a long time in this way where they're saying, but look, these are all concerns that. Not w- that but back to no, <laughs> no, 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 but, but going back to what no. Tristan was saying, I do believe in what Tristan was saying. I think that we'll actually go back to the fucking basic mobile phone, the basic typewriter, because oh. we're so fucking fast in technology. Look, no. that I, it's a bit I, overwhelming. I, I don't think that technology will slow down. But yeah. what what I noticed lately that and. Because I, I'm, I'm like, I'm thinking like, uh, I've just been in a new Audi, right, in the car, right, mm. and uh, of late, and it's been quite common, like this, they're thinking, oh, because of global warming, it's good to stop the car down when the reds are light, uh, when the lights oh, are yeah, light, yeah. light, so light. I've got that, yeah. And then this car starts again. Stop, right? stop. But the whole car makes noises when anything is not yeah, in line, that, right? Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, I find beep, myself beep, 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 exactly. Beep, 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 oh my god! Beep, 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 oh my god! I do think that like like and so like even with my phone like um, like uh, I'm not even on messenger, but it, it's like uh, my group has been messaged and I I'm feeling totally. So what I see more and more that I'm answerable. My group is being messaged. The things with the stuff and the thing, the numbers and the noises are ah. exactly <laughs> because and, and what I'm reading is I'm answerable to the machine. Yeah, it's it's tilting over. Like I'm not <clears throat> I'm not running the machine. The the machine is running me. I'm gonna go from all of a sudden it peeps and I'm gonna go stop. Like <laughs> something's happening, right? And it peeps again, right? And it's going like, fuck, man, I'm getting stressed out here. Like MK Ultra, kill you know, the president. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm a little bit technophobic. I'm not hey, keen on it. And right? now that you've mentioned the new Audi car, as soon as we leave here and go on Facebook, we're going to get fucking adverts of Audi cars on our Facebook. Oh, yeah. I'm going to ring him up and say, look, just send me a check because I'm in need of dosh, okay? <laughs> like, so I'm, I'm cool for it. I do two days a month where I turn off my social media and I just don't. Don't go on it. And um, do you miss it? No. Do you That's feel great. Do you feel anxiety though to post a post every day because you have an audience? That would be. Oh my god! So That's the killer. For me, if I had a big audience, I think I would hate it because I would feel obliged to give them something, as in a post. Let me ask you. And I think uh, she b- before I finish, I think that the best thing that they could do with social media is just take away the likes. Take they away the lights? No, Australia. no, but you can't like in them. Austra- well, the in lights? You can't like and you can't comment. They're ah, taking away I see, I see. the yeah. number of likes. You know what I mean? They're taking it away? Right. Yeah, in Australia, you can't you see it, but you can still number. like. Th- you and for oh YouTube. Oh, fuck. Man, this is for YouTube, they so should take away the getting, thumbs down. That's just really ridiculous messy. to have a thumbs down. No, this is like, you know, I was posting a painting. I'm saying like, how many people like it? You put something brilliant up and someone goes... 
What's giving you some like, feedback? What what you want to send? You want to send? No, but they're, they're just being an asshole. I um. <laughs> you know, I fuck know. you. You sh- work shit. <laughs> no, I remember, I, I remember being an acting at acting school at a very acting school in Sydney, and uh, I, I met this. I sort of she was a very talented girl, and and um, and um, yeah, no, she liked you know she liked a lot of things like drugs and stuff. But anyway. One day I find her, find her in the street and she looked very distressed and she said to me, and I said to me, she said to me, hey, Ali, I'm, I'm really on, on the edge. And I said, you know, what's going on? He said, like, uh, you know, you've got the world at your feet. You're a gorgeous girl, like you're so talented, whatnot, right? And she said, look, I find it, I'm really stressed out. I can't hold up with my social media personality. Nobody cares about me in reality. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what I saw. Wow, you know, how can I like, like, and and I saw, I bought it. I I saw it like, wow, she's bigger out there in the in the electronic world, in the media world, and then you know, and said, oh, everybody is just walking past me. So I like, think you have to have your values and what's important no, and to think, you going into anything. I think what you said earlier. This is why I asked you but when you but said but when you said you you were basically diarying your own work and your own progress, and so you can check back on it, right? Mm. So that was actually your 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 yeah. your measurement in, instead of saying, oh, you know, is anybody out so who's waving to me? Oh, hey, I'm existing. No, and like, I'm not talking about your you know, social media. I'm talking about girls that they have built a social media purely around ass. Yeah. <laughs> like purely around their ass, right? Ah, hey, I, I called it a great coffee ass. table ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and sorry, and I. Will, I Oh, and they've got fucking huge followings, right? Yeah. They would feel obliged to like, hey, it's fucking pissing rain outside. i got to put on a... Can I learn pitch. something here? Well, yeah, in that case, it's your job, right? If, if you're living off it, um, mm. I, like I've known people who literally... Uh, I had a partner who lived off social media and yeah, it was a big stress. It became this thing where it's like, how really? do you entertain people how do you constantly maintain eyes on you that's horrible when why, do, oh, why do we love looking trend, at like ass why do we just love looking at it why does it's it sell it's so nice and round i like big butts and i can't lie it's the yeah, no, I just so what do you would say because <laughs> no you, I, I, I don't people i follow it because you have <laughs> i don't, don't like many, ass how many um, you follow asses yeah i follow, I follow <laughs> lots of hot asses how many followers do you have on ali you need to get your ass up <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna skinny like porn ass, porn stars. <laughs> be like, no, no. put it away. <laughs> we will like, pay you. <laughs> <laughs> what, yes, please. <laughs> what would you say? What would you would you say that you have a brand? <laughs> would I say I have a brand? Have you got a brand? Well, you've okay, got your own for, brand. For example, I, I, I need guess to just I guess it's coming back to that. Sorry, it's coming back sorry, to that. I need to go to school for a moment. Sorry, I'll be right back. You carry on. It's. it's it's coming back to that idea of um, whatever is maintained, whatever is gain, um, gained by self-promotion is maintained by self-promotion. Mm. So for someone like you, it seems to me mm. that your relationship with your um, account, with your social media accessibility, how you're building your brand in that way, mm. is actually something that's actually quite easily maintainable for you, fun, enjoyable, and it's not giving you any stress. Which is great if anyone's listening and mm. wants to uh, take notes on, you know, how you, what you feel that you are selling and what what the transaction is between people who, which you're putting out and what people are also getting from you, mm. which seems to be something that's not taxing, for example, like someone who is constantly worried, how am I going to continue to entertain my audience because mm. I have to either keep one-upping myself or I have to keep doing this or I have to keep doing that. Mm. You know, generally the more wholesome, um, the wholesome, like wholesome in his way is like, oh, I'm offering you inspiration or my life is inspiration so you can mm. have a relationship with my life and it might encourage you to be more active, be more proactive. I think the, the problem with social media and is that as a society, I feel like we we glorify grandiosity. So as a society, we glorify, you know, wealth. We glorify, um, you know, perfection. We we glorify people who are loud. If you look at anything, if you look at things like, you know, say the UFC, you've got like 
great fighters, but like the ones I watch the most are the loudest, the Conor McGregor's, the ones who yeah. make the biggest, the biggest deals of themselves. Like, are there better fighters? Like, mm. but who gets the most money and the most airtime? We're always looking for entertainment. It's like, you know, there's there's great singers out there, but we want to see Britney Spears shave her head and have, a, you know, a panic attack. Um, we're always looking for entertainment. We're always looking for something out there. And so with social media, I think the trap that that we fall into is people are always looking for something to, whether it be love or hate, they're looking for something different. In society, in life in general, I think one of the best books I've read is um, a book by Seth Godin called The Purple Cow. We're just looking for something different, something that stands out. And so people get really bored and they get fickle. And if you see someone that's on social media and, is, you know, does the same thing every day and is probably a good role model, it's probably going to be boring. I think that from, from your that, social media, you're quite good because you, you that's only a glimpse of your life because we know you. You're into a lot more stuff. Mm. You're into, like, as Ali said, drawing. You're into acting. And correct me if I'm wrong, you talk honestly on your social media about depression and how to overcome that. Mm. And you have bad days. Mm. But there's a lot of social medias out there. You think these fuckers never have bad days. Yeah. Like, every picture is just a fucking sun and a glass yeah. of wine, you know? Whereas you, you talk about... It's every Bumble picture. You talk about depression <laughs> and you talk about days you have anxiety. I, mean, I'm, I'm, I had one like this. <laughs> I mean, I'm just jumping into this uh, um, uh, conversation while I was away. But <laughs> I thought you were always here. <laughs> I, I love, I love <laughs> that you're laughing about me. This is like, I must have done something funny. But, and I think I'm, as a German, I'm so unfunny. But, <laughs> 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 but no, but I'll be... Are we not on social media also looking for validation all the time? Isn't that a measure of validation? There has to be. There has to you be. know, we 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 calling out there saying, "Hey, listen, you know, this is what I'm doing." Like, I'm in an audition. Because yeah. but in the waiting room for an audition. Don't we do that when we talk? Yes, but it's a different sense of value, and this is what you know when you when you talk about uh, uh, market economy, right? And market economy seems to set the value. Like when you switch on the news, it's about, oh, we should be concerned the stock market is down or the stock market is up, you know. And I'm, I'm really questioning about it at the moment. What is the, who calls what is worth what? What is value, you Whatever know? Whatever you're willing to pay for. Yeah, exactly. That's you true know? value, yeah. Is that true, Wendy? Well, no, it's not true. But as in, you know, I'm just thinking more so, you know, Antiques Roadshow, they'll tell you, you know, your bowl's so worth $700. At no auction? At auction? Yeah. No, one, no one's going to pay that for your bowl. You can say that no, on like, No, this is, no, this is the thing of, like, when I'm talking, like, I heard about this, this, this thing that Michael is playing with at the moment about unemployed actors turning out to be uh, killers, right? <laughs> and and I, I, to get a job, right? And I'm thinking, oh, you should drive it a bit more. And you think like, oh, what about killing down superstars? Because they're occupying the playing field, right? Mm. It's a bit like years yeah, ago. Just level it out there. No, <laughs> years ago I was in Berlin. There was sort of this big graffiti and said, oh, get rid of Picasso and Da Vinci because they, they, they. Uh, Monopolizing they're, the market. They're, <laughs> exactly. They're <laughs> occupying the market, right? So new talent can't come forward, right? <laughs> The other day, I was sort of like I was telling Tristan in the car about this little Botticelli. <laughs> it's going at Sotheby's Sar- on uh, on auction, right? Mm. And it's uh, estimated a hundred million dollars. I mean, to me, it's unfathomable anybody who's got a hundred million dollars to buy a little painting, right? Mm. And Did it sell? So, what's the m- what's it? Did it sell? I will sell. Yeah. Somebody's going to rock up. How about, because how about this? How about this? Someone's going to come up, there's someone that has $100 million, right? He's going to come up and buy this little fucking painting and he's going to put it in his wall. A painting I haven't seen. He's mm. going to put it in his wall and he's going to be able to fucking bat over that as much as he wants, yeah. right? Good for him. Winning. <laughs> then, right, like you say, there's an artist um, uh, that you mentioned earlier who decided to do something different with his life. Mm. Yeah, yeah. made no produced value. Mm. But exactly. it produced a change in the psychology of you and the way that you live your life. And therefore, the way Often that you... a generation later. And the way that you live your life now is inspired by um, someone who didn't receive a monetary Duchamp. value, yeah. but received a revelation about being. Mm. 
yeah. and then that crept into your psyche. Yeah. And then the value then pays off in um, your beingness. Totally, totally. And totally. so when you want to, and this is actually one of the hard things, and I think I've just, not, and I haven't given up on it, I've just accepted that true value, what I would call, it's kind of, you could say spiritual, I don't really want to put spiritual on it, is that when you want to measure the wealth of a society, a social society, the, you, you, the, the things that you can't measure are the fact that, you know, mothers, all of these social elements where people put in time and love and whatever that actually increase yeah. the vibrancy of, you know, when you walk down in peace, for one thing, walking in the street and not getting, don't not having a fear for your life, you know, but also the way that the city lights up on Christmas and, th- you know, the atmosphere, mm. all those mm. things are value. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And and it's just not measured with it $100 million that only gets to shared with some guy that gets to see it. Obviously that artist, right, it's almost like maybe you could say this, is that that artist actually, we actually receive that value. Yeah, yeah. And now someone's going that has money is purchasing the trophy of what has been distributed culturally. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's just really holding the mantle, going, yeah. I've got $100 million and now I have the painting. But we've already received the true value. Of course. No, it's well put. It's yeah, really, it's, well, yeah. it's really well put. Yeah. It's your but it's like, that's why some people say, okay, I won't buy this personally. I will actually... Uh, Distribute to a museum so every, mm. it won't just be hiding over my couch. Yeah, sure. It, it's actually sure. going to end up in a museum or in a public place. Yeah. But those, place, those things become assets now. That painting is not a painting now. It's an asset. It's an investment that's going yes. to increase in value. And in, if he wants to sell it in 10 years, he's going to mm. make $4 million profit. And for rich people, they need to put their money into assets that preserve mm. wealth. But yeah. I wonder if this is going to be the, the, the discussions of a future generations where where we, um, you know, I mean, I find, you know, when, you know, we have magazines, the most richest in the world, right? You know, the guy, what's his name, the South African dude? Uh, um, Amazon? No, no, Amazon, like, no. Uh, Bezos. South African, who's the South African? Uh, but you've got your four, elec- four electric, four magazines. electric cars, I mean, I love oh, them. Elon Musk. Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. He strikes me as a wonderful person, right? And he does good work, right? Mm. The other day he's been uh, quoted as net value of 240 billion, mm. right? Mm. Shit. To me, it's just totally absurd. <laughs> One million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But it's, it's like, you know, so the, you know, we're talking about in, in you know, the, the difference of quality of things, like, you know, so we're all going like, oh, wow, the guy's got that much money, you know. And then thinking, oh, you look at the other side. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm becoming a bit serious here now. We're thinking of the other side. It's like, oh, poor, the poor people who are living in the gutter and the refugees, like, under the top Poland, you know. How do we rectify this, you know? I mean, this is a little bit serious now. But I read. A, I was reading a good, bo- a good book that I didn't read, so I read a bit of it. <laughs> but I knew what was in the Confess. book. Confess. Yeah. And the book was about. Um, it's called the Great Equalizer, of course. And it was a, it was a good book, title. It's a good. A, it was a book about how we're going to address inequality because the four major things that actually did something about inequality were travesties: uh, famine, war, natural disaster. And some other fucking shit. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. I love that title. Disease. (laughs) Yeah. And um, so when they happen, like you look at the Black Plague, um, you look at all of these, like COVID was supposed to kill most of us or something. You know, you could say that. But the book was saying we're actually on top. We're not having as many wars. Yeah. We're on top of our diseases. Yeah. We know when the volcanoes are coming. Yeah. We evacuate people. And Indeed. so the things that and in nature actually eliminated, it, it did eliminate a lot mm. of the population. Yeah. That when it did that, the inequality gap shrunk. shrunk. But, and he was saying that every policy that we come up with, you know, just as in our government and all of that, anything that goes to reduce inequality doesn't do anything except these motherfuckers and we've come we've been able to artificially we've been able to Mm. protect ourselves from it i will say this 
I think Jesus nailed it on the head many years ago when he said, well, this is how you dress inequality. He said, if you think you're a fucking, if you want to be the greatest, you've got to wash feet. Yeah. I mean, uh, for me, and I also, think the well, solution, like the solution <laughs> the, 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 sorry, but I think that the, 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 it already has been discussed for me is that the way to address inequality, if, you, if we are serious about inequality, we Get have done. to give up. What we have, yeah, but no one is going to want to do, to do that. that. Hey, no. and so, so the the quest to talk about it is ingenuous, yeah, because hey. most people aren't yeah. going to give up. I love it how people are like, oh, give yeah. us immigrants, give us this, give us this, and you just go, and then you're at work with them, right? Yeah, and they're going, then they, they get a call from their boss to do some extra work, and they go, that's not my fucking job. Yeah, I love the you know people yeah. are ingenuous. I, true. I, I love the Marines saying, everybody, everybody <laughs> wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. <laughs> yeah. and also yeah. what we're coming to is like uh, sure. what Warhol said like in the future everybody is going to have his five minutes of fame and we're right in the midst of it yeah we got that too yeah, yeah. We, got, you know. we do and, uh, yeah so I don't know I find it very interesting but 15 uh, minutes 15 minutes oh it's 15 yeah. minutes it's a bit longer that's great I'd rather five a Will year we, for five. three years <laughs> Will we wrap it up? We wrap it up. I would actually want to quickly say uh, <coughs> thank you to facilitate this, and uh, because I didn't want to come in the first place because I had actually nothing to say. But on the other hand, I felt uh, rather stimulated, and you helped me out of a trough here. And no, uh, but and uh, if the listeners a bit okay. over us, just lingering on on topics of of race and all that, just give us a break. We're we're just really exploring the uh, forum and talking shit. But we-